What's up, guys? It's the Faruqi brothers back with another video. And today, for you guys, we're going to be talking about the breaking news coming out of the MCU. Captain America 4 has officially been announced uh, and it's in, currently in development. Uh, Malcolm Spellman, who wrote, who was the lead writer for the Falcon and Winter Soldier limited series on Disney, Plus, will be helming this new project for the MCU for theatrical release for phase four. So this is probably the biggest news, and it's, it's directly related to our next topic, which I'll just tease to you guys really quickly, which is the Falcon Winter Soldier finale. But I wanted to get everybody's first raw reactions that we're getting a fourth Captain America movie in the first place. And you know what? I'm actually going to start with the resident Captain America fan, which is Umer. So Umer, when you heard that there's going to be a new Captain America film for the first time since 2016, but really if you think about it, the first time since 2014 we're talking about a solo Cap film, uh, what did you feel? I think you're muted, Omar. It's exciting for them to uh, go back into Captain America's world now, with, especially with Sam's story. Um, you know, it'll be the it'll be it'll be kind of like the first of his Captain America. So it's, it'll be nice to kind of see him. He's not full fledged Captain America, um, you know, as as far as the, with the finale and everything. So, it'll be cool to see them jump back into his his world and 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 actually start building this uh, this version now from being that full fledged uh, version of Cap. So, um, it's exciting. Um, I'm not a fan of the 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 writing that was done on the show. I thought some parts were amazing. I thought other parts kind of were lackluster, but. Um, all in all, I'm excited. I'm curious to see who's going to direct. Um, I loved what the Russo brothers did, but it would be cool to see kind of a new take, which is probably what's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, just all around, just fun, cool to jump back into that world. Yeah, and I was thinking that, you know, with Captain America, he was the defining character, one of the two defining characters of the first three phases of Marvel. And each phase, you got one Captain America film and I felt that's always important even in phase four and we talked about phase four so many times about how it's going to be different and unique and it's going to redefine certain things and of course you can't really have a Marvel universe without a cap um, in it so I honestly was pretty happy with um, the announcement I was actually surprised when I heard that their, the movie announcement came out I was like if, if, I, if I was a betting man I'd be like listen I would think Falcon and the Soldier would get a season two rather than Captain America 4 being announced as a full theatrical movie but Marvel has been so impressed by the show and the audience has been very impressed with it as well that they're like, hey, you know what? This is the time to invest in what the fans are asking for. Um, everyone loves Sam Wilson's portrayal in this show, even more so than his previous uh, few encounters. So um, I think it was a really smart move. I think it's the right climate. It's the right political climate to have um, a black Captain America on the big screen and for people to react with that and have this like moment where it's like, hey, Captain America is literally the poster boy of America. And what is what does that come with? What are the pitfalls of that? And I think um, there are things that you can do with a black Captain America that you could never do with a white Captain America. And we've had a similar conversation about that when we were discussing what a black Superman can be and and, and what would that mean? Because Superman is very much also... Um, at one point, he was literally war propaganda for America. So they're connected to one country, a country with a very jaded history. And how do you come to terms with that? And that I feel like um, they, they can do. And they've built a solid foundation in this show. But Zion, when it, when it comes to Captain America returning to, to the MCU and having this new movie, where do you think they can possibly go? I know we're going to get talk about the series as well. But what would you like to see coming out of um, this next movie? When it comes to Steve Rogers, I mean, for Steve, I'm like, you can't have really a Captain America four without Steve being some sort of prominent, having some sort of prominent presence in the film. Now, the only way that can be done is obviously through um, some sort of time travel, bringing him back from a point where post Endgame, when he went back to live his life out with Peggy, maybe at one point they they need him for something, or he jumps back into the present or the current present, which is where Sam Wilson has become full-fledged Captain America, and now he is like the cap for their uh, the Avengers. So um, that was probably the only way to bring him back story-wise. So it's like, all right, this Captain America, he's caught up with everything. He's seen what's happened. Now he's just like um, in a new era of his character. So um, it'll be great to see. I mean, uh, having Captain America 4, you can, have, you can now have multiple Captain Americas. You can have 
Steve Rogers beat Captain America if should they choose to bring it back for even longer. Um, let's see what happens. I guess that depends on how the film goes, if Chris Evans wants to continue, and then you can have also Sam Wilson as the current Captain America of 2021 and onward as well. So you can have both characters coinciding together and they can have a great dichotomy in that as well. And who knows, maybe even down the line, um, Winter Soldier will become his version of Captain America as well. So you have three caps. Honestly, anything's possible, especially with so soon such an announcement that um, they're even going forward with the Captain America 4, which is surprising. But um, knowing Marvel, they they know what they're doing. They've planned ahead. So I don't think this is as spur of the moment as people really, as it seems like to the public, because they wouldn't have announced this if they didn't already write down a good solid plan that, all right, this is what we want to do. And now after the success of this film, they're like, um, of the series, they're like, why even wait longer? Let's just announce it and build the hype. It does seem like if Steve Rogers would ever come back, it would be for these like epic uh, uh, single moments where he comes for a little while, but in the end he always departs again. Whether he comes back in the next Avengers movie, there's always rumors of Chris Evans signing a new contract. He denied that on Twitter. But then again, I think you have to deny that uh, and let it be a surprise for when it happens. The same reason why Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield aren't saying anything about Spider-Man at all. Whether they are in the movie, we're not 100% sure, but you know, there's a lot of rumors that are pretty much spelling it out. But same thing with Chris Evans. If he was ever going to come back as Cap, um, it would be, again, for your big Avengers, your secret invasion, these kind of things, or for a Captain America 4. But I do think for the day-to-day, like if... If a current cap has to do anything in this MCU, it's going to be Sam Wilson from now on. So the Sam cap is, by and large, the the status quo Captain America starting from Phase 4 onwards until we never know what happens in the future. But it's interesting because there's a lot of passing the torch moments. And I feel like Thor 4, in a way, is also going to be passing the torch because you can get a sense that when they said Jane uh, Foster is going to become uh, Thor... Uh, you get the sense that, okay, they're doing the things where people are, the original mantles are being passed to the next generation. We know uh, there's a Riri Williams Disney Plus series in, uh, in announcement. She's Ironheart, who's like the Iron Man successor. So every like, old school phase one hero is getting uh, a sequel hero. And even there's rumors that um, Black Widow's sister is going to become the new Black Widow at the end of the Black Widow movie. So uh, there's all this type of stuff happening back and forth. So there is there is a passing the torch. It was not a sister rumor. I don't know. What, 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 oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, that, then I guess the film takes place in the past, though. So like, I No, no. I mean, I, I, we can, I think you can guess that it's going to jump back and forth in time. Like, like it takes the past. But in the end, they're going to – let's just call it what it is. In the end, they're going to do a thing where the sister is going to see that her, her – uh, his older sister is dead now. And maybe she'll pick up the mantle. Part of me feels like because of Loki trailer and stuff like that, where she's in the film. That's a the misdirection. Series, that they're probably gonna bring it back. Yeah. You think? I don't know. I think, I think that's I think that's a complete clear misdirection. I think even if they even if they move towards the direction that Shroud is saying, I'm not. I think they're, they. I think like they're the old characters are gone. You can't reconnect, redo what they what the old guys did. Go ahead. Samir. What, did you, what did you say, Samir? I mean, they're, they're doing it with the, I mean, they're going to do it with the Hawkeye series, right, as well, and uh, She-Hulk. So I think I think that's yeah. definitely the way they're going to Every go. single and, character is getting, yeah. And uh, I think for, for Black Panther, they're, they're kind of, that's like the only yeah. way they can go, really. Yeah. See, it seems like every single original hero is getting, um, uh, uh, getting a younger, more diverse... A, a, a redo, you know, in a sense. And I think that's the only way. I know Umar's mentioning kind of like, oh, well, this is where the character was. But I always see like a Batman Beyond thing where it's like when Terry first took over, no one liked Terry, nobody. And then by the end of it, you fell in love with this character. And he's equal, well, maybe not equal to Bruce, but he is he is Batman in his own right. And you, and you respect him as a Batman. And I feel like as we see all these future incarnations uh, take over their their old roles. I mean, Miles Morales. When Miles Morales first got introduced, people were like, well, who is this guy? But now, after Spider-Verse, you can say he's almost as beloved as Peter, if not more beloved in, for some circles, right? So uh, I think we, so we're seeing that evolution happen with Marvel. DC is a whole nother story. We can't even get there. We can't do the first heroes, right? But um, for, uh, let's jump let's jump from that. And this next question for Samir, is let's go that to straight into Falcon with the Soldier, because a lot of what we're talking about for Captain America 4 is obviously directly related to the end of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So Samir, I mean, the full series, how did you feel about it? Um, especially in relation to WandaVision, which we just had recently. Um, I think they, I think they handled uh, Sam's character and Bucky's character really well. 
uh, as well as um, John Walker's character. I think the only, I think the only like not as good parts of the show were the flag, were all the flags, flag smasher scenes. Um, I think that was the devil just really to get the plot going, but it was, it was the whole show was just to get to make Sam Captain America. I think it was better than one division as a whole, considering the one, the one division ending. Um, I really liked how they ended the series with uh, giving giving Sam the Captain America title in the credits and then announcing yeah. Captain America four. So that was that was like the thing. Um, yeah, that that that's Marvel marketing, right? That's yeah. dope, <laughs> you yeah. can't really replicate that. Yeah, it's Marvel marketing. Umar, give me your pros and cons overall. Now, as a series, what are the pros of Falcon with the Soldier for you? What are the cons, and where does it overall stand compared to Wandavision? Yeah, I think um, Wandavision, like like I've said before, like. I I liked like the uniqueness of what they went for, um, but like we've talked to nauseum, they botched like the 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 landing. Mm-hmm. So um, with this show, it's more mid to good, pretty much each episode, um, and then there's moments that are amazing, like the jo- the John Walker stuff, uh, especially when he uh, like in front of the whole world did what he did, uh, and and murdered someone basically as Captain America like that. Like th- there were certain ideas that they went and they played with, uh, which were amazing. Um, the Isaiah stuff was really good. Um, obviously Sam becoming Cap, that that was amazing, and just the suit and the way they went about it. Um, and his speech was his speech was pretty good. I think it's it's hard to follow up um, Chris Evans, Steve Rogers, because his speeches were were really amazing. Like a lot of his speeches, even some of them weren't even that deep, really. But just like though his delivery was so good. That, Performance, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but all in all, the, the, the show was good. I think what it suffered from um, is it really did feel like just Marvel Phase 1, like for me at least, where it felt like, you know, the, 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 the gripes that I had with Phase 1 uh, stuff that Marvel was going for, I had similar gripes. So for example, some of the writing was not great. Some of the, and WandaVision suffered from that a little bit, but then at other moments it was it was nice. So it's like, I think just because they're like they're in their phase one again of like creating the new guys, like the new Avengers. Yeah. It's phase so, one for the Disney Plus people, yeah. Yeah, so it's you're gonna have some paint, like some kind of growing pains. Also, because of because um, the other characters were so iconic, like like Chris Evans comes back, man. He, you know, he. That's why there's a part of me that actually feels like it would could it could be better if they don't actually bring him back, just to give some his like it's, it's his like movie. one solo movie that's just him yeah because chris evans comes back let's call it what it is you go steal the whole show <laughs> even if it's one scene yeah so, then again that's people thought about the spider-man 3 right like if toby shows up who's gonna care about tom holland anymore if you see toby standing in the spider-man suit so i mean if tom who cares about tom holland's spider-man even without like, toby <laughs> so, no, but see like, the spider-man thing is different movie. because uh chris evans he is I think it's an echo, but uh, Chris Evans, he is Captain America. He's like the one Captain America. He basically captured the role, and now going forward, anybody who plays the Chris Evans character will have to take some sort of inspiration from him, like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Like These are like these one-off Chris, uh, Rob Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. They set the standard for what their character is, so it's like, all right, if he shows up, it's like, all right, that's that's the Captain America we know. And So Umar's right in that sense, where it's different from Spider-Man because there's been multiple Spider-Man over the years, but there's only been one Chris Evans Captain America and one Captain America character so far until now where Sam's Captain America. But, but, another, but then the rebuttal to that point would be that um, Sam Wilson is not Black Steve Rogers. He's Sam Wilson. It's a completely different Captain America character. So so we're not he, – he is not – he can stand side by side the same way Miles Morales can stand side by side with Peter Parker and they can both call themselves Spider-Man uh, in the same way Chris Evans – I don't think they're ever going to recast Steve Rogers in the MCU. They're not going to make a new Steve Rogers show up. But I think make, I think I think Umar's point is that like don't make it so that Chris Evans Captain America just comes in saves the day. Like he's like the key they need to win yeah. everything. Let can't be, Sam can't Wilson be. Captain America be the one to lead the victory, and Chris Evans like oh help or support or be like that mentor role for a little bit. But he can't be the one to come and save the day. Sam Sam Wilson also again like. Sam Wilson to Steve Rogers is obviously very different than um, Peter to Peter Parker. Like they're all they're all Peter. Now the Miles Morales character obviously is a different story, and the way they went with him was different. But um, as far as like the comparison, I still don't think like 
again, like none of them were as iconic as Steve Rogers. Let's not forget, we love Tobey Maguire now in hindsight, but he's not the most beloved. Like he's not the most beloved. Like he's not. Like so some people hated his performance, right? Steve Rogers is loved by like everyone. Like I don't know anybody that like had a problem with the uh, Chris Evans version of, uh, or he's the only version of Cap. Here, here's an idea I have about where they can go with, with I just thought of it right now on the spot. Where they can go with bringing back Steve Rogers and it filling the plot. So maybe you can tell me because maybe you'll recognize this comic panel and then tell me if it's a good idea. But what if they bring Steve Rogers back and then he just says this? That, that, would, that would be crazy. I mean, they they introduced uh, sorry, I forget the character's name, but uh, she's going to be Madam Hydra, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what's her name? <laughs> Julia uh, Louise <laughs> Dreyfus. Elaine. Yeah. Elaine from Seinfeld. That's the only way I know her. But yeah, so they introduce her, and she's Madame Hydra, who's um, obviously, again, bringing Hydra back, right? And who is she working with? She's working with Zemo. She's working with U.S. agent John Walker now. So if they're rebringing Hydra into the fold, imagine she found a way to like either clone Steve Rogers, brainwash Steve Rogers, bring a Steve Rogers back from somewhere, and then there you go. You have evil Steve Rogers, and now Sam is face to face with his mentor. You know, so that'd be kind of interesting. I don't know. That's a cool way to do it. And but um we'll see. The last point I want to talk about is the suit, and we can like go around the room and see what we thought about it. I mean, it's very comic accurate, but it's still worth seeing, you know, just because something's good in the comics is translate on screen. So here's the the full suit. Of Sam Wilson as Captain America. I mean, Umar, what did you think about the suit? Number one, uh, how like how did you feel about this reveal? The reveal and the suit, two different things. Yeah, no, the reveal was was um, was amazing. I think that the the suit itself is is it's nice. Um, I don't personally like the the fact that it kind of connects to his, like it connects the goggles are connecting to the suit. Um, but then at the same time, it's it's, I mean, man, it's it's a nice suit like it's perfect like it's it's the full cap and also it still has sam wilson's kind of like the falcon stuff is still the guy the wings and everything like it's it's sick i think that one shot of him holding um carly and like coming down with her and like walking yeah. towards the the uh the ambulance or whatever and the, and the, like, basically the whole world um yeah. that was that was a sick shot just like that was very much like i was like yeah this guy that's cap right there like this is it's the new cap He's doing his thing. Um, what yeah, what about what what about what about you, Umar? Uh, what about you, Samir? Rather, how did you feel about the suit? I thought it was nice. Um, I thought I thought Umar didn't like the head part just because uh, I said Umar twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just because. Um, yeah, I got I got I got the picture. Yeah, the difference between the comic suit and and the and the live action was that uh, in the live action one he has like a collar around his uh, shirt, like under like above the above the headpiece. Uh, I think I think that makes it a little weird, but overall, it's 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 really nice. Yeah, it's really close to the comics. I mean, it's right there. I right. think I think yeah, the suit is pretty much spot on as far as like how can you adapt this into live action? Um, I think they did it perfect, and it fits in with how the other costumes are in the MCU. I feel like my one small grab with the suit would be like the shoulder pads, where sometimes like the silhouette was standing in the dark. He looked like oddly bulky, which. He's he not he's not really that bulky in real life, but like his character. But those shoulder pads just make it look like boxed out. So I felt like that was a little wonky, but otherwise the the suit is really spot on. Yeah, I think one of my favorite pictures is a picture that Anthony Mackie himself put on Twitter, and this one I shared a couple of times now, where this is like a set photo, which is this is like not made for the screen, but rather for a camera still. And you can really feel like he's like embracing this role. He, he, there's a picture someone put up that when he first got cast as the Falcon in 20, like 12 or 2013 for Winter Soldier, um, he put this picture of, of himself with like the Captain America mask on. And that was all the way back then. And then now he's finally in the cap suit. And I, I like that like journey, you know, they done like, the journey for the actor. The MCU yeah. really done it big. Like they, they actually executed set plan. Yeah, I was gonna. That was gonna be the, the last point before I sign off on on this. Is just like, uh, you got to give Marvel their credit. The way they've launched their Disney Plus lineup. I mean, you've only been two shows in, but both shows have generated so much hype for not just the general audience, but for the hardcore fans. And we and, and I'll be the first to admit that I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought, and we probably a lot of us did, maybe not Samir, but we thought, that, okay, after Endgame, 
it's going to be hard for them to rebuild interest. But WandaVision, when they revealed that Agatha was the villain, that song, Agatha was, Ag- it was Agatha all along, was number one on iTunes for like a week, right? So the way the general audience just gravitates to this, this, um, this universe, uh, whether it's the general audience or all ages, it's crazy, right? And so Marvel, they're like, they're not stupid. They knew WandaVision is going to do good. So guess what they did? They made sure Wanda is going to have a gigantic role in Doctor Strange 2. They knew that Falcon and Winter Soldier was going to do well. And sounds right. They didn't like announce it today in the morning. They're drawing up the contracts. They had this ready. They knew this show is going to be a hit. That's called confidence because you know your consumer base. You know what they want. So you're just giving it to them so you can make the next, me- next meal because you know you already know what their taste is. And that's exactly what they did. So when you, like Samir pointed out, when you end the show and – the title card changes to Captain America and the Winter Soldier. And then five minutes later, the Hollywood Reporter breaks the story that Captain America 4 has announced. What do you think the fans are going to feel? They're going to feel hyped, right? If only the other side of the comic world can have the same hype, but maybe it's for another time, right? <laughs> uh, so what did you guys think about Falcon and the Winter Soldier? How did you feel about the Captain America 4 news? Let us know in the comments below. From myself, from Zion, from Umar, and from Samir. We're the Faruqi brothers, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.